Welcome back to another ThingScript tutorial. In our last ThingScript tutorial, we built this stacked moving average indicator together. As part of that code, by opening up, we defined not only an 8, a 21, and a 34 period exponential moving average, but we also defined a 50 and a 200 simple moving average. With all of those, we created these two variables called bull stacked and bear stacked, and that's what we're going to be exploring in today's tutorial. I'll be showing you a simple way to scan for these arrows that we created as part of that tutorial, which checks any time we move into a stacked EMA formation. Now to get started, we're going to copy all of this code that we wrote, and we're going to come inside of the scan tab. Now inside of the scan tab, if you already have some custom scripts, you may want to remove them and you'll need to be in the live money version of Thinkorswim to follow along. Now first step is clicking add filter here and there we're going to select study. Now inside of this, by default, you'll have an ADX crossover study. We can edit this by clicking the pencil icon on the right hand side and there click the pencil icon which pulls up this panel. Inside of this panel, select ThingScript Editor, and we can delete the ADX crossover that we already have. Now we'll get an error here, which says at least one plot should be defined. So there, if we paste in all of our code, now we have plots, except now we're getting the error exactly one plot expected. That's because we have one plot variable here, we have another plot variable here, and we have a ton of plot variables up here with each of our exponential moving averages. So we need to edit that so we have only one plot variable per scan. That's the whole goal of thinkorswim scans. You give it one thing to scan for and it goes and it finds wherever that is happening. So let's start by modifying each of these EMAs. I'm going to change the word plot here to a def. By doing that, we'll get an error for the formatting code since you cannot apply formatting on a simple definition, and that's what def is. So we need to delete that and just change this code to a def, and now our 8 EMA is all set. We repeat the process for the 21, the 34, the 50, and the 200, and I'll go through those a little bit quicker. So we paste in def across the board, and we remove all of the formatting code that we created. Whoops. So we need to remove this short dash. We need to remove all of the default colors. And that now allows us to have just our clean EMA and SMA definitions. So this part of the code no longer gives us any errors. Now the next piece is our bull and bear stacked variables. Now these are already definitions and they already take care of the logic we would want to check if our moving averages are stacked. We had even created a bull stacked and a bear stacked plot with this trick which allows us to find the first time that the moving averages go into a stacked mode. So one more time we can remove all of this formatting, we don't need any formatting for scans, that will in fact just give you more errors than anything and even if you have only one plot I found it does affect the performance. So our goal with the scans, keep the code clean. Now you'll see we have just these two plot variables. And as you can guess, if we change, say, the bare stacked plot to a definition, now this scan will only look for this one condition. It will go and find places on the daily time frame, since the daily aggregation period is selected here, wherever we have stacked moving averages with the 8 above the 21 and the 21 above the 34, and the 50 SMA above the 200 SMA, all those being true on the current bar, and they were not true on the previous bar. So if we test this, I'll click OK, and let's go ahead and run this in all symbols that are optionable. I'll click Scan, and now we can see the 73 different places where we have these conditions being met. Now you may want to narrow this down a little bit more, so we might say something like add a filter for something like a stock price, where the ask price must be greater than 10. That will get rid of a lot of these for us, so if I rerun the scan, we go from 73 down to about 56. 
You can continue to add in more filters if you'd like, stock filters, volume filters, etc. But now we have all of the places where the moving averages have gone stacked for the first time on this current bar, which is end of close on Friday since I'm recording this on a Sunday. Now let's take a look at one of these symbols. I'll use Stanley Black & Decker, SWK. So we come into the chart of SWK with our indicator already loaded on. And sure enough, we see a bullish arrow on the current bar because for the first time, our moving averages have all gone stacked. The 8 is above the 21, the 21 is above the 34, and our 50 SMA has just crossed above the 200 SMA, so now even the 50 is above the 200. Now to repeat this for the bearish side, it's exactly as you would guess. We come back to the scan tab, I'll come back to our edit icon right here, and instead of changing our bull stacked plot to be the plot variable, we change the bear stacked plot to be the plot variable, and we can turn the bull stacked back to a def. An alternative, if you find this flip-flop to be a little bit messy, is you can simply just comment out the line of code that you don't want to run using a hashtag at the beginning of it. You'll see this grayed out, and now the only code we have is this bull stacked plot, and I can even change this to a plot variable, and it no longer gives us any errors. Now if I click OK, and we run this scan, now we're checking for all of the places in which we have bear stacked moving averages for the first time. Disney right here at the top, so let's take a look at that chart, DIS, and sure enough, we can see the bearish stacked moving average inside of Disney. The 8 is below the 21, the 21 is below the 34, and the 50 is below the 200, and this trigger just happened on the current bar since on the previous bar, the 8 was slightly above the 21 with this green candle right here. So in this tutorial, you learned how to take the stacked moving average indicator that we built. You learned how to customize that indicator and uh, morph it just a little bit so it fits within all of the different scan limitations that we have in Thinkorswim. We changed all of the plot variables to def variables, leaving just the one plot we wanted the scan to go and find. And we really just cleaned up a lot of the code with the formatting that we had involved just to make it nice and easy to read. Hope you found this tutorial useful in taking our stacked moving average indicator one step further. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.